All right, good evening. My name is Mary Mathewson. I am here to talk to you about overcoming stress. I'd like to introduce myself. I am what we call a purple person. I know I don't look purple. I grew up as an Air Force brat. My dad retired after 24 years in the Air Force, Vietnam era. I then went active duty Navy myself for five years and ended up marrying a Navy man. So I spent the first 20 years of my marriage pretty much from a long distance vantage point. Six months out of every year he was deployed. I raised three children, two boys and a girl, and my daughter decided to go into the Army. She is a U.S. Army Reservist, and I am here to tell you that I did deployments with my father and worried about him in Vietnam. I did deployments with my husband and worried about him in Bosnia and post 9-11. And when my daughter went to Afghanistan, I thought I had it nailed and I would have no problems and I am a veteran at this. And it was a whole new world. It introduced a kind of stress to me that I had never even considered as possible. So I have been where all of you are. No matter what your situation is, I have been there. I have had friends deployed. I have deployed, I've had my husband, my father, and my child deploy. So if you've experienced it, I may not have experienced exactly the same thing, but I've at least looked at it from your vantage point. All right, as I said today, we're gonna to talk about overcoming stress. We are going to look at the, some of the sources and symptoms of stress. Nobody in here is unfamiliar with stress. I'm not gonna tell you anything you don't already know, Hopefully what I will do is remind you and help you refocus your knowledge about where your stressors come from. We're gonna look at some ways to develop a resiliency to stress, what resiliency actually means. We're gonna look at some ways to cope with stress, both on the front end and the back end. And then we're gonna look at one or maybe two relaxation techniques that might help you and, and when things get bad, when things get difficult, you might be able to employ. All right, what is stress? Is this guy stressed? He is stressed. He is stressed by the thing that, I'm gonna be honest with you, stresses me out the most. That silly machine that is supposed to make our lives easier and quite frankly, never does for me. Stress is a condition or feeling experienced when a person perceives that the demand exceeds their ability and their resources to mobilize and deal with that stress. So what you think you have available to you exceeds what you think you need to deal with any given situation. What are some of the effects of stress? What stresses you? All right. Something new, the person moving your cheese, redefining, re-examining when normal changes, all right? The effects of those stresses can manifest physically. They do for me. I get headaches, I get stomach aches. Oh my gosh. I'm a, I'm a mint, you see me chewing mints because that's what calm, calms my stomach. A change in appetite, for me it's almost always diving into the food. By the way, I found a great stress reducer in this area. It's called Big Al's Butter Burgers. You want to reduce stress, go have a butter burger. And then you can go to the cardiac care center right across the street. Um, insomnia, acne. What are some of the other physical effects of stress that people here have felt? Rashes. Rashes, shaking. I shake. I am gripping this. Um, clicker pretty hard because despite the fact that I do this for a living and I do it for fun, I get very nervous when I'm standing up here and I have to hold something in order to keep myself from shaking. All right, the emotional effects of stress, anxiety, depression, lashing out. I am a redhead by bottle now, but I was born a redhead because I am Irish and we know how to get angry. We are champions, we are taught that from the day we're born. And then the exact opposite of anger, which is apathy. Not caring, whatever happens, happens, fine, it's fine. 
My, I married to an Asian man. I get angry, he gets quiet. So you can imagine our stress fights. Why won't you react? Well, why are you climbing the ceiling? All right. One tool that I found to be very useful, and I forgot to mention in the beginning that in my real life, I'm a high school English teacher in a county right outside of Washington, DC. Yes, it is a carnival right now, but we hope that it will get better soon enough. One of the tools that I found very early in my marriage that helped me a lot was a stress journal. I wish that I could give each of you a book and tell you how to lay one out. Take a piece of paper, any piece of paper, your hand, the back of your phone, take a picture of this. A stress journal is nothing more than a place to articulate your feelings in the moment. And it can be personal, and in the beginning it should always be private. Uh, formatting your stress journal like this, when you, if you've never done a journal before, formatting it like this guides you through a situation when you find yourself under stress. All right, what does a stressful situation look like? Your soldier has deployed five minutes ago, and inevitably, you will have a flat tire, the washing machine will blow up, the dryer will start making sounds that we don't think dryers are supposed to make, and the refrigerator will stop working. That's pretty stressful. In the moment, in the moment, that is as bad as it can possibly get. Are you gonna get the flat tire fixed right away? Maybe, maybe not. Maybe you need to fix that washing machine that's spitting water all over the floor. But if you have, when you have a moment to think about those things going on, give yourself a piece of paper, or at least in your head, think about what caused the stress. Was it a loss? Have you just lost a tire and now you have to get another one? Have you gained another task to do in your already busy day? Or was it really the cause of the stress, the fact that you have to do all this by yourself? Where in the past, there was somebody else to help you along. If you're the deploying soldier of, I'm sorry, this is event two, your soldiers are already deployed. And so all of your washing machines have broken and your tires have gone flat and your children have had bad days. All right, what is the cause of this stress? Is it something that you've lost or is it something that you've gained? And why is it important to know whether you've lost or gained in that stressful situation? It's because you need to, to channel your energy and figure out where the negative energy is coming from in that situation. Identify your thoughts and feelings, and this is where writing it down can be very helpful. You don't have to spell correctly. No English teacher is come, gonna come along and correct your grammar or your punctuation, but you should identify how you feel about that situation. I hate my washer and I would really like to blow it up. And you can say those things in a journal when nobody else is gonna see it. And then you wanna make note of the actions you took both in the moment, after, after things settled down, the choices and priorities you made because you can't fix the tire and the washing machine all at the same time. You may not be able to afford to fix the tire and the washing machine. You may need to fix the washer and ask your neighbor to use her washing machine until you can fix the washing machine. And then how you resolve the entire situation. When you use a stress journal, when you write these things down, and if you keep it in a pretty book, by your bed or by the phone or wherever your peaceful place is or the place that you go when you just have to put your hands on your head and say, I need a moment. You put that there when stressful situations come up down the road and you don't even know where to start. It's something for you to look at and think about. All right, I did this in this situation. Maybe something along those lines will help me. I found it very useful to do the stress journal and keep a stress journal. When my husband was deployed, one of the worst deployments he had, he was gone for 14 months, he thought he was coming back. He literally grazed the shoreline and turned right around and went back out. So he was gone for 14 months, over every holiday, every birthday, 
buying a new house, settling into a new place that I didn't particularly want to live in the first place. When he got home and we did that reacclimation thing that you're going to experience hopefully sooner rather than later and that has its own sets of stressors, instead of screaming and yelling at him, which my Irish allows me to do and says is okay, but then watching him retreat into himself and just be quiet and process, I was able to hand him that journal and say, this is where this is all coming from. So from my experience, the stress journal wasn't just a place for me to let my thoughts and feelings out and to get it out instead of yelling bad words at my kids because I really didn't hate them as much as it looked like I did in the moment. It, was a, it became a way for my husband to understand what he hadn't seen or understood because he only heard about it after the fact. So that was one of, that for me became a really effective way of dealing with deployment for my husband. And then I did the same thing with my daughter. I've never shared the journal with her. Maybe someday I will. All right, there are unhealthy ways of dealing with stress. And the things listed here aren't only ways of dealing with stress. The trick is to recognize when you're exhibiting these behaviors or hitting these habits on for the, for the reasons of stress and not for what would be considered normal or healthy reasons. All right, smoking and drinking. Well, nobody should be smoking, but we won't talk about that. Drinking, again, I'm Irish. I have no more to say about that. I recognize that that is a stressor go-to for me. So I also know that if I'm under a great deal of stress, I need to pay attention to whether or not that glass of wine became a bottle of wine. Is there a glass in the sink or is there a bottle in the trash? If there's a bottle in the trash, I need to figure out how many people were over and if it was only me, I need to be careful about that. Overeating and undereating, I talked about Big Al's Butter Burgers. I wasn't particularly stressed yesterday, so there's no reason for me not to have a butter burger. But I'm going to admit that I kind of want to come back to Atlanta and have a butter burger the next time my daughter makes me crazy. Zoning out in front of the TV or computer, I would rather die than zone out in front of a computer, but I will zone out in front of the TV and watch mindless reality shows. Anybody watch The Bachelorette? I'm hooked. I can't, I, I, I missed who she dismissed the last time. I can't wait to see it. Um, withdrawing from friends and family. There is nothing wrong with letting your friends and family know that you are under stress, especially if you are the kind of person that retreats when you're under stress. Make a point to let your fam family and friends know at the beginning of the deployment or wherever you are now that if you lose track of me, there's a reason for that, and can you please hunt me out and understand that? I am a breast cancer survivor, and when I was undergoing chemo, I'm, but I'm a strong, independent Irish woman. My mother had it, my sister had it, it runs in my family, I knew I was gonna get it, I was okay. I had a friend who called me every day at four o'clock, and I at one point said to her, why do you keep calling me? You're driving me crazy, I'm tired. She said, because I know that at some point this is going to hit you and it will hit you at the worst possible moment. And if that worst possible moment has happened in the last 24 hours, I want to know it. Interestingly enough, as annoyed as I got at her calling every day at 4 o'clock, I answered every day at 4 o'clock. All right, pills and drugs. There are pills that, are, that can help you in the short term. It's again, you have to figure out whether you're using them for the right reasons or whether they're becoming a problem. Sleeping too much, procrastinating, filling every minute of the day, and lashing out at others. My favorite, it is everybody's fault but my own, and I figure I'm Irish, I should be able to yell at you. That's all there is. All right. The way we deal with stress depends upon our personalities. And hopefully you remember from your personality, because everybody went to, the, to their first event, first yellow ribbon event, did their personality traits, and understands what kind of person they are. 
There are three different approaches or, or three overall approaches for dealing with stress and becoming resilient to stress. Action-oriented, emotionally oriented, and acceptance oriented. All right, the action-oriented approach is often to avoid the stressor. Avoid the people who stress you. I worked for a school system that at one point decided that no student was ever going to get an F, and we were never allowed to put an F on our report card. Kid didn't have to come to school for two months, and they passed anyway. This is high school. They can't read or write. Sure, they could pass senior English. Why not? He, oh, he stressed me. <laughs> it was pretty bad, and it got ridiculous. I took control of my environment. I said no to him. And ultimately, I had to leave that job and actually went to teach in a jail, which is a story for the hallway. Um, I, what I learned in that situation was that there is nothing wrong with saying, I can't fix everything. My to-do list is way too long. I can't fix the entire education system. I can't fix the entire school. I can't fix or control that dimwit at the top of the ladder. And that's that. What I was able to do was to alter the situation. I did quit my job. I was willing to compromise. I didn't think that I wanted to go to a new job. I was ready to leave the profession altogether, but I decided that would be stomping my feet and being mature. I compromised, found a different job. And I managed and adapted to the situation and did what I needed to do. All right, emotionally oriented approach. Look at the big picture. How important will this situation and the resolution of it be in the long run? Is this something you need to devote 100% of your energy to? Or can you do it on the side or as a secondary? Adjust your standards. How, anybody in here perfect? I know Miss Rhonda's perfect. I saw her be perfect all day for the last three days. Best I've ever seen. Adjust your standard. Perfection is a major source of avoidable stress. I knew in that situation what education was supposed to look like, what the situation was supposed to be. Perfection looked like something that I wasn't going to be able to attain. Perfection was me being able to change the situation. I couldn't do it. So off we went. And reframe the problem. This is probably one of my favorite visuals. And if we could turn the lights off, I would, because I also think this is a really good relaxation technique. I have a pretty picture, of a beautiful sunset on my computer. And I just sit and look at it sometimes and pretend I'm on a beach somewhere. Reframing the problem is really important. And I had a first year teacher explain to me how in Washington, DC, she has a 45 minute commute during Washington, DC rush hour traffic each way every day. I said, how do you deal with it? She said, because people are gonna drive like crazy people and there's nothing you can do about it. And if I get a, per a particularly problematic driver who's just weaving in and out of traffic, I just let them go because I figure they must need to poop. All right, much easier to deal with goofy drivers with that. Oh. And understand that stress is unavoidable and don't control what you can't control. All right, ways to cope with stress. While oversleeping is a good indicator that you're experiencing stress and trying to to escape whatever is going on, it is really important to get a good night's sleep. I know how hard it is, especially when you have a service member deployed to not wake up in the middle of the night, turn on CNN, check what's going on in the news, worry about whether the children are gonna to get to school on time when you also have to be to work at the same time, whether or not there's gonna be a letter or an email from your loved one, from your spouse, your child, your friend, your cousin, your aunt, whoever it is that you are loving and supporting, and that's why you're here. Chemicals can help. If it becomes unavoidable, see your doctor, but make sure you do it carefully. Exercise, I love to walk. 
If you see me walking, don't talk to me. I'm in church. I know people who sing, who hum, who meditate. Me, I walk. I can walk 25 miles and have in a day. Actually, I walk 26.2 is my longest walk in a day. And I was happier at the end of that day than I've ever been. I wouldn't suggest doing that every day, but because other things get in the way. Declutter, organize. I'm not an organizer, but I have a, my friend who called me every day at four o'clock, she has a rhythm. We call her Sticky Tab Queen because she has colorful sticky tabs for everything. And when the sticky tabs get out of place, and we used to mess with her, like messing with the sticky tabs, but when they get out of place, she gets all wigged out. Socializing, I have a good core network of friends and I've been fortunate to have that network of friends pretty much from the beginning of my marriage. And they understand the situation that I'm in and the mental vacation. My mental vacation right now is on the, in the, on the island of Mykos, Mykonos, I think it's called. I don't know why, I just saw a picture and decided ah, I'm going there. All right. I need you all to close your eyes. Put your hands on your laps and your feet on the floor. And sit up real straight, no slouching. Pull that core, pull that core in. And I want you to breathe in and then out. And breathe in as far as you can and then out as far as you can. And I want you to do that five times. All right, and then slowly open your eyes. Do you feel differently, even ever so slightly now, than you did just 60 seconds ago? And there's nothing wrong with that. Making you tired, if that breathing makes you tired, then your body needs a moment to rest. And that doesn't necessarily mean that you're going to get the, breath, the rest in that moment. What it means is that you need it. And you need to pay attention to that. And if I can give you one piece of advice when you leave here, it is to take one minute twice a day, maybe even when things feel their most hectic, and breathe. Because your body will tell you what it needs. If you come back from that breathing, ready to go back to the office, for me to go back to the classroom, then that's great. And I'm gonna tell you a secret. Do you know where I do my deep breathing? in the bathroom because my kids will leave me alone in only one place in the bathroom if i could i would do my taxes in the bathroom i go in the bathroom and i sit down wherever sometimes on the floor sometimes in the tub sometimes wherever i need to and i breathe for 60 seconds and if i'm tired at the end of that breathing then i know that i need to go take a nap but if i feel energized and ready to go then i know that i can get more done does that mean i can go take a nap no it means that i need to be aware that i'm tired so what i'm facing and looking at in that moment may not be the best moment to make decisions to add to my to-do list it might be time to take away from my to-do list it might be time to zone out in front of the TV for that healthy amount of time, and it probably isn't the time to turn on CNN. All right, so we looked at some of the sources and the symptoms of stress. What are, what's one source of stress for you? What's one source of stress? Um, not having housework done. Not having housework done. And what, does, what is one of the symptoms of stress that you experience over here? Shaky and nervous, unable to control your physical environment. That's actually a physiological response to stress. It's the fight or flight. And, and that matters. You need to pay attention to that and acknowledge that. Do what you have to to get through the moment, 
but then understand how you resolved it and what it was that caused it. All right, did we look at some ways to deal with stress, some ways to be resilient and be, my friend calls it a tennis ball, be a tennis ball against the wall. All right, it's gonna bounce and that ball is gonna collapse and then it's gonna hit the wall and the ball is gonna collapse again, but it's gonna bounce back and eventually you'll be able to catch it. All right, what's one way that you can deal with stress going home? from this program? Reading. Reading. Oh, I love you. Oh my God, you just became my favorite person. Nobody ever answers that anymore. How about, how about over here? Exercising. Exercising, good. What kind of exercise do you do? Just walking. Just walking, all right, I love it. All right, and then we looked at some ways to cope with stress. I'm hoping that you can take that breathing technique with you and I'm hoping that some of you will try the stress journal thing. It's a really good way to, to articulate your feelings. And I know I'm an English teacher, so I'm all about putting the words to it. But it is a good record for you and potentially for your loved one when they come back. And then we looked at a relaxation technique, the deep breathing. Some people take it longer, take it farther, and do go so far as meditation. But what you need to do is find something. Find something that works, because stress unaddressed is stress that will never go away. Okay, my name is Mary Mathewson. It has been an honor and a privilege. I do this because I want to. I am a volunteer, and I beg for these assignments, because this is my happy place. As I said, I live outside Washington, D.C., which is a carnival right now. There is nobody in that town with any sense. This, when, the, when they come on the TV and talk about they're the patriot, they're the American, that's nonsense. What I'm looking at here, you are the patriots, you are the Americans, you inspire me. I thank you for the privilege of being here today.